Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in sophomore English. We are in unit 4, our poetics unit. And we are um, turning now to the issues of figurative language. We're going to look at Yusuf uh, Kamanyaka's uh, glory. Let's um, first of all though remind ourselves, just uh, if you will, just for a second, um, on uh, page 715. Um, we're looking at figurative language, especially the simile, a comparison using like or as, the metaphor, some comparison without like or as, and personification, identifying somehow an inanimate object as if it's human. Reminding you as well, write this down in 2B again, we're always asking two questions about figurative language. What is it and how does it work? Most students get the what is it part once they know a proper definition of the simile metaphor. It's the how does it work part that often is more problematic for them. So we want to be paying attention to that question. Now let's go to uh, Yokomaka for just a second. We saw him in our freshman year. I believe we did a poem of his about basketball. Um, we now, um, Slam, I think was uh, the title. And we now are going to pick up his text, Glory, which is going to be a celebration of baseball, especially a very important moment in baseball. Many have argued that baseball, for much of America's history, was the American pastime, the American sport. Some argue that it has changed. Um, you know, I'll leave that debate to you guys. Um, on uh, page 717, notice the birth date of 47. Um, uh, Yokonata has come a long way in his life, born in a small rural town in Louisiana. He's now a creative writing professor at Princeton University in New Jersey. Komenyaka's collections, uh, Neon v uh, Vernacular, earned him a Pulitzer Prize in 94. He has said that, quote, the writer has to get down to the guts of the thing. Now, we're going to turn uh, on page um, 720, 721 to glory. Um, this is important information about the history of baseball. Although African Americans had been playing baseball since right after the Civil War, segregation barred them from organized leagues. That is to say, black ball players couldn't play in the major leagues. The first all African American team was organized in 1885. Write that down. That will be significant for this poem. The first all African American team was organized in 1885 as a result of the Great Migration. African American teams began to concentrate in northern cities. In 1920, eight teams joined the first Negro National League, as it was called. With the Eastern Colored League formed in 23, the two leagues played their first World Series in 1924. By the 1940s, these games attracted a large number of fans. For those of you who have not seen Ken Burns' uh, important documentary on the history of baseball, I'll recommend it to you as well. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at this at this poem. I'm going to have you write this down because we want to pay attention to the title, Glory. And we want to ask about the different ways that this title works for this poem. Let's just follow along now and enjoy the uh, double meaning of the title, shall we? Glory by Yusef Komanyaka. Most were married teenagers working knockout shifts daybreak to sunset six days a week. Already old men playing ball in a field between a row of shotgun houses and the magazine lumber company. They were all Jackie Robinson and Willie Mays, a touch of Josh Gibson and Satchel Page. In each stance and swing, a promise like a hesitation pitch always at the edge of their lives, arms sharp as rifles. The Sunday afternoon heat flared like thin flowered skirts as children and wives cheered. The men were like cats, running backwards to snag pop-ups and high flies off fences, stealing each other's glory. The old deacons and raconteurs who umpired made an out or safe into a song and dance routine. Runners hit the dirt and slid into home plate, cleats catching light as they conjured escapes out foxing double plays. In the few seconds it took a man to eye a woman upon the makeshift bleachers, a stolen base or home run would help another man survive the new week. Now, the idea that sports is a form of survival is a very old idea. And, of course, this one takes us all the way back to our study of, for example, the Iliad, where, in Homer's Iliad, we will have a little mini contest, an athletic contest. We'll see the same thing, write this down in 3a. We'll see the same thing in Virgil's Aeneid. That idea 
that when guys get together, they often want to compete against each other, but not to the death, right? I mean, obviously in the Iliad and the Aeneid, you have men fighting to the death. That's true of the Odyssey as well. But this is a kind of different type of competition, not where theoretically men die, killing each other, but they compete against each other for some kind of a prize. And you'll remember, of course, that in the ancient Greek tradition, it was the laurel branches that were placed around the head, remember, of the winner or the victor, especially in those early Olympic-like activities. Here, we're going to play a similar game. The game is baseball, right? But the poet is going to play an interesting linguistic game with his title, Glory. The idea is, of course, and this is now level one, this is a poem that describes real briefly what it was like in those very early black or African-American baseball leagues where you had young men, notice the opening line, married teenagers were told old men playing ball. That is to say, they're already so older because of the work that they have to do. And yet, they look for some kind of hope of escape from the boredom of their lives. By the way, all of those names, Jackie Robinson, William May, Willie Mays, uh, Josh Gibbons, uh, uh, Gibson, um, Satchel Paige, were all African-American baseball stars of the 1920s through the 1970s. In other words, before there was Jackie Robinson, the, the great ball player who kind of broke through, and you're maybe familiar with the film, you can write that one down as well at 3A, the film that describes the great Jackie Robinson. Um, before those ball players, you had these ball players who were dreaming of glory, but really they were just trying to survive. Look at the final line, a stolen base or a home run would help another man survive the new week. Of course, baseball, and this has always been what's precious about the game of baseball, like most sports, but baseball in particular, always has that interesting symbiotic dance between those who are the performers and the ones who witness it. That is to say, those of us who go to watch the game. And there's an interesting kind of juxtaposition between the two, uh, which is why, of course, it's so much better to watch a baseball game live than it is on television. Many argue that television killed the sport of baseball. So much funner to be there in the ballpark and to enjoy it. Of course, notice we have similes going on. The men at line 17 were like cats running backwards to snag pop-ups and high flies off fences. Hey, did you see that between not line 19 and 20? If you didn't keep reading, you would read it as pop-ups and high flies off, and then you would read fences stealing each other's glory, of course the use of the title of the word. This requirement to keep reading, remember, is what we call enjambment. And we want to make sure that we do that when we read that line. Again, go back to it. The men were like cats running backwards to snag pop-ups and high flies offenses, stealing each other's glory. The idea of stealing each other's glory has everything to do with stealing bases, and of course it has to do with the competition as well. Let's jump now to 2A. What is this poem really about? Well, let's say three things. One, it's of course a comment on the power of a game like baseball to provide those early black athletes, those African-American athletes, who were uh, unable to be a part of the experience of formal Major League Baseball for many, many years. They were, they were trying somehow to appropriate the game for them. And not just for them, but for those who would come to watch. It would be a young Jackie Robinson that would, of course, come and watch these kinds of games that would allow him to begin to dream about playing in the majors and being allowed to do that because of the racism that was a part of the league at the time. Number two, obviously this poem speaks to the power of struggling to make it through the experience of life by using sport. Many have argued that, especially in American culture, Sport has always been the way we survive the toughest of times. So, for example, if you go and visit the internment camp at, uh, at, at Heart Mountain, where the Japanese internment camp was, you will see, in fact, pictures of young men playing baseball. Of course, we say men, but today we are thankfully able to say that competition is as well allowed to women. 
Yes? So that, for example, uh, um, we, we have women who play in professional leagues in basketball, of course, very important and, and very exciting. And it allows for young girls to dream about the possibility of themselves someday being able to compete as well. Finally, number three, and this is most important, the word glory here means for us something other than fame. It means survival, making it, somehow finding meaning in one's life. And the struggle to do that is representative here in baseball. Let's jump to 2B. Obviously, we have our examples of metaphor and simile, but the one I'm going to point to at 2B is symbolism. Baseball here in this poem becomes the act of struggling to survive of getting through a tough experience, a hard experience, and somehow believing there's value in something like the game of baseball. At 3A, what is for you your greatest baseball movie? Some, again, will qualify it as uh, maybe a film like Robert Redford's The Natural. There's a lot of great films, Bull Durham, that are baseball films. Uh, what's your favorite show about sport in general? that shows the competition, the need for competition. Of course, many of you play video games that are rooted in sport, maybe baseball, maybe soccer, some other kind of sport. Why do those games seem to be so um, exciting and so useful to so many uh, um, sophomores? You might jot that one down. Of course, we already mentioned the Iliad, the Odyssey, and the Aeneid. All three of them are classics uh, in regards to the power of sport, competition, and the like. Finally, let's go to 3B. What are your thoughts about competition in sport? Is it a useful thing? Some of you have a strong feeling that sport is very important in your experience of school. In fact, I've heard some of you say you wouldn't even come to this place if it wasn't for the fact that you could compete in a sport and be involved in a sport. Others of you have argued sports have taken over our experience of school and it's no longer just for fun anymore. And for example, in high school, kids who have never gone out for a sport can't go out for the sport without feeling somehow humiliated because the ones they're going out to compete against are ones who probably from the age of five, six, seven were drug all over the place learning how to play the sport. And so there's no way that a, that a person could just show up and say, I've never played basketball before, show me about this sport and learn the sport. It's become too much of almost like a job for a lot of high school students. What are your thoughts about that? Do you think that sport in general has become too serious? So that ball players now are celebrities and they're taken very seriously in regards to the amount of monies that they're paid? Do you think there's something wrong in our culture in regards to our fascination with sport? What's your own experience with sport? Do you enjoy watching it? Do you enjoy performing in it? Some, some uh, students will say they never were athletes, but they enjoy watching their performances. And what's the difference for you between watching on, for example, television a game versus going to a game live? When was the last time you went to a live ball game? When was the last time you went to a professional live ball game? Did you go alone or did you go with others? It is, of course, a social engagement as well, right? Notice it's referenced here at the very end where you have this notion that for a split second, a ball player can look up into the stands and see a beautiful girl, and in that moment, somebody might steal a base and then steal, by extension, steal his glory, right? Well, there you go, an introduction to the great, maybe some argue, the greatest game, the game of baseball. Thank you.